Hi, this is Shadi. Today's presentation comes from the Superstar Judo 1981 Ippon by Neil Adams. Of course, link will be in the description. I will take a few footage here and there to discuss some of the standing arm locks. Look at that venue. It looks like your local tournament with the uh, green and red mats and here you can see a very young uh, neil adams uh, discussing his world uh, championship of 1981 so today we're going to be discussing standing arm locks i understand there is hazard when people tend to jump into them and go to the ground however i do think that they have their place today but before we do that please don't forget to check out my translated manuscript of the origins and history of judo by ryohei uchida of 1903 available in modern japanese french and english so let's take a look at some of the movement it seemed very dynamic of course uh, golden score did not exist at the time and so here even switching from ground to stand up you can still interact standing up as you see here and then uh, catches him with uh, an uchimata because he was too bent over and uh, again here um, a very defensive opponent neil adams very good on gripping you see here it was a coca because he landed on his buttocks and his thigh but here this standing arm lock actually two uh, st uh, arm locks uh, follow together so he faints goes to the side threads his arm while the other one goes over to lock the elbow and then the opponent to escape the pressure of the ude gatame goes on the ground and neil adams follows it with a juji gatame so so here he goes to the side, threads one arm under to lock the forearm and the other goes over to lock the elbow and then tries to go around in order to lock and get the tap standing up as he mentioned. But since he tried to relieve the pressure by going down, he tried to follow it with an arm lock, juji gatame. So this is ude gatame, meaning uh, arm uh, hold. And here you see from the ground you can get it from many ways of course it can of target the elbow and the uh, shoulder as well depending on how you grip the arm but here if the arm is extended both of your palms down hugging it with your arms hence the name and then you put a lot of pressure on the elbow while here for example if the arm is bent of course it's going to be more of a shoulder lock but still arms hugging it and uh, applying pressure of course you can twist and apply pressure on the elbow uh, um, it is a very effective technique it can be quite surprising at times uh, especially when they isolate that arm and spread you out kind of like what they do in jiu-jitsu but uh, of course standing uh, option was very much a thing i think up until recently uh, today I think from this position uh, you, you would still be considered standing so it's not a neiwaza technique anymore and here he has a one knee up so i think today this would not apply and it would be uh, stopped but i think you can see that controlling it standing up like this without diving over i think uh, it is a very safe and at the same time it it a threat like this would prevent people from extending their arms too much and get way too defensive and way too passive so you can get it from anywhere basically from the guard here you see from the mount and you can lock the arm by isolating it and locking the elbow so um, standing arm locks I think should be a thing because judo initially before I continue, look at this variation. Kochi tries to go for the leg. Uh, he backs off, goes behind him. Neil lifts him up for a massive scooping throw. Posts his arm, two arms, cartwheels, and escapes out of it. This is just amazing. And I don't see why we should lose this. At the same time, this is what I mean by wholesome judo. You have katame waza and nage waza in the stand-up. And at the same time, you have the entire body being attacked and defended. So, of course, I'm not going to finish this video without celebrating Neil Adams' greatest throw, which is the Tai Otoshi 
absolutely magical and he was known for it and it's his favorite throw as he says so standing locks of course it's not just Ude Gatame you can have uh, here you can see Waki Gatame comes to mind again it's it's gonna prevent guys from overextending in defense and you see your only option is to try to go down to relieve the pressure which can be followed by a good Newaza sequence or if you are good you try to keep them close to you and hug the arm tightly in a sense that they cannot roll out of it and then you uh, force them to tap out and of course if people will say well if you're gonna allow it back then people will just going for these these are not as easy as you think standing up it's very dynamic and to catch the arm like this it's very easy to just pull it uh, out and of course the fight is gonna be much moving now when it comes to people saying it's dangerous standing up i agree diving your entire weight on an arm should be punishable by elimination just like we do today however keeping standing up and controlling that joint and circling around and not just throwing random weight on it is not uh, as danger is not dangerous in my opinion and you leave the option to uh increase the pressure or just lock someone up here for example uh, i think it was at the time i don't know the rule was if it's one arm you it's not dangerous but clearly it is so today that would be punishable by elimination here for example another one a hundred percent i uh, condone eliminating that person but doing what neil adam did very technically and trying to progressively increase the pressure as he's circling around trying to maintain that hold there is nothing uh, wrong uh, with it and judo in the past if you don't remember um, kodokan originally wrote it as nagewaza throwing technique and katame waza holding or uh, controlling technique it wasn't just niwaza and tachiwaza like we see it today and this is a great example of a healthy exchange between the two that we just saw from 1981 and i don't see anything inherently wrong with it and to th if you think that it's so easy to just grab the leg and throw people or to grab the joint and lock it standing up you are delusional and you haven't practiced judo long enough you if these let's say come back it's going to be rarely seen and at the same time they require a lot of mastery to control them in such a, an explosive uh, and dynamic environment and this is what i mean by i want a more wholesome judo when i talk about the olympics or the rules or whatever it may be it's just the natural expression of it more movement more attack more gripping and very dynamic and waiting for the right moment to attack waiting for the right moment to lock an elbow and of course uh, far less passivity that we see today and i do blame the shido game and the golden score for it i think many of you would agree with this so uh, if you have anything to add please let me know down below don't forget to check out my book and my patreon for exclusive content this was shady and thank you for listening